Welcome to the Startup Grind. I'd like to just uh, give a warm welcome to campus for those of you who are here for the first time. I hope you're going to enjoy our space and uh, we're looking forward to see you uh, next time as well because uh, we do this type of events a lot. So welcome and um, maybe a bit about Startup Grind, what we, what we do. So basically the main idea is to introduce entrepreneurs, investors and accomplished people that are front runners in uh, what they do. And today we decided to, to bring someone who actually knows a lot about what he does. <laughs> if I did it, uh, said it correctly, maybe not. Uh, but a uh, very interesting uh, thing and also update to our startup grind is that it's uh, not going to be moderated by us organizers. That's what we've been doing for the past two years. But we decided to give space and word to people that actually know way more about the, the topic today. Okay, I'm going to say it. It's going to be mainly education and blockchain. So uh, very interesting. And for this, to kind of uh, have an equal communication and discussion with our guest, we invited Matej Michalko, who is president, CEO, and also founder of Decent one of the very successful blockchain companies. So please give warm applause to Matej. And if I may, I'm going to also introduce Vladimir so you guys can already jump into uh, the interview. And uh, the main guest today who's going to be interviewed and going to be giving a lot of insights is uh, Vladimir Lioka, founder of Brain Basket. And Big long chain of Gentlemen, stage is yours. Thanks. Thanks so, <laughs> first of all, thank you, Dushan, for this great introduction. And I'm uh, so happy to be, to be here among uh, this uh, excellent community here in Bratislava at this event. And I'm uh, also very happy to uh, interview uh, Vladimir Lulka. Hi, Vladimir. Hi. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. So maybe a few words about Vladimir uh, to just to introduce the, his, his, his background. Um, so Vladimir Lulka is a serial IT entrepreneur with 15 plus year experience in software engineering and IT enterprise industries. He has a strong expertise in cloud and big data solutions. And uh, he has international experience uh, in IT governance and transformation project. Uh, Vladimir is a founder and CEO of uh, Intelica, or managing partner? Co-founder. Co sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry. We have sorry. Alex today, by okay. the way, my partner here. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> co-founder. There, more, there are yeah. more than one founders, but actually we are three founders at Decent, for example. Yeah. But we say founders, but okay. Anyway, not, uh, really. not, a, not a big difference. So Intelica provides professional services and end-to-end -end solutions for mid-market and enterprise customers. Uh, their expertise includes a variety of fields, including custom software development consulting and project management, big data analytics, and uh, artificial intelligence machine learning, right? right. And, uh, of course, blockchain software uh, yeah, development. Is today? This, is, this is one of the core, <coughs> core, core topics today, and the web and mobile development and many others. Exactly. And uh, maybe very important thing to mention about Vladimir is that uh, he is... Founder or co-founder? Co-founder. Co co-founder One of the initiator. One of the initiator and managing partner. Am I am I right? At which organization? Brain Basket yeah. Foundation. Yeah, it's uh, in Brain Basket. Cool. Brain Basket Foundation, which is a non-profit organization that helps people in Ukraine, Moldova, and Slovakia to get educated in the field of IT. Uh, Brain Basket was founded in 2014. Uh, with the vision of uniting the efforts of all IT industry players to facilitate trading of 100,000 programmers in 2020, right? So in three exactly. years exactly. from now. So how many did you train uh, up on, uh, until until now? It's a question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. First of all, let, let me a bit revert sure. and uh, step back. To step back, um, also want to say big thanks to Startup Grind and also Campus Dushan and uh, Teresa. Where is Teresa? Here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's a really big honor because it's it's my really uh, actually first uh, 
public uh, speaking, public speech here in Slovakia. So I am living here since 2015. Uh, living here permanently, doing business, running interesting projects, meeting and do networking. Uh, my family is here, so I love country, I love people, and I want to bring more innovations here. And um, that's why it's, uh, it's not about how many uh, developers we produce and uh, how many graduates, it's about uh, where we are now, uh, where I am now. So yeah, what we are doing. Tens of thousands already, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Anyway, so. But uh, coming back to... Um, Coming back to your question, so uh, actually, brain basket, uh, it's always uh, part, at the moment, part of my life. So since uh, September 2017, so I was slightly moved in supervisory board as a member. No, I'm not the CEO at the moment, but uh, I'm happy that uh, idea which we uh, implement a group of, uh, by a group of uh, IT companies, IT leaders and uh, uh, opinion leaders in Ukraine 2014 still alive. So what actually was done uh, after revolution, so everybody knows the shit which happened and still happening in our country. So uh, Ukraine struggling, uh, economy screaming. So we had a lot of problems uh, after previous uh, regime of pre previous president. So and uh, IT community was always strong in our country. So I'm originally from Ukraine. Uh, but was born in, Ru in Russia and I live in Africa and so close to China. So, as is military, so we move a lot around post-USSR countries. But uh, in coming back to Ukraine, uh, in 2014, uh, economy was in a very bad situation. Now it's a bit better. And IT industry was uh, and still uh, number three by exporting, uh, ex by uh, GDP impact, impact on GDP of country and uh, number three on, uh, when it comes to export um, after agriculture and uh, machine in, uh, and heavy industry. So uh, what we decide to do, we decide to look at where, where we are now. 2014 Ukraine already had about uh, 100k IT specialists in the market, the country is big. 100,000, right? Yeah, 100,000. Uh, Impressive IT number, right? Especially uh, when compared to Slovakia, which, which has a uh, population come on. of... Come so on, so countries, population of the countries is uncomparable at the moment. So you have uh, up to six, up to six million or something like that. Ukraine five, five point something. Yeah, five yeah. Point so five Ukraine million, is 30, 39. So, but uh, coming to the topic, to the point that uh, in Ukraine we still have huge demand as uh, all the world in Europe on IT especially. So according to Gartner and Forrester, uh, till 2020, so it's also coming to idea why 2020, one next 100,000 specialists, uh, it's going to be a lack of IT specialists in the world, uh, about f 5 million, and in Europe, it's up to 1 million IT specialists till 2020. Mm -hmm. So in, in Ukraine, we decide, okay, so let's Ukraine be a uh, software hub, so software, like engineering uh, country number one, at least in Europe, and fill this gap. So what we decide to do, we, we decide to provide basic uh, foundation uh, education free of charge for people who want to change profession. We call them switchers, so not, not swingers, switchers. <laughs> <laughs> switch, switch from non-IT okay. profession to IT. Uh, and what was done, so we found strong partners at Harvard and MIT University. So first of all, as a big honor that we cooperate uh, tightly with uh, uh, Harvard University from Cambridge, Massachusetts. So they gave us a lot of uh, insight, knowledge, and supervising of mm -hmm. uh, our educational process. So we start to open learning hubs uh, in the cities in Ukraine. We have 24 regional cities. It's, it's like it's four regions. You know, in Ukraine, it's 22 or 23, I don't remember. So in such a so way... It's about eight, I think, in Slovakia. No, right? eight, eight, region. yeah, eight regional eight, cities. Eight. In Ukraine, it's, it's 20 right? plus. 20 so we plus open uh, during... Uh, Two years after yeah. 2014, we opened 65 locations in 36 cities, covering almost all Ukraine. So people start to come and getting uh, knowledge about computer science at basic level. If they love, if they like to code, they join us in our community. Yeah. During four months, they they got a lot of uh, great uh, knowledge that bootstrapping yeah. together with mentors. So, so, so it's a non-profit non project. It's right? a non-profit, non -profit. Uh, free of charge. Uh, we for, that's like a startup we would strap in from our pocket. So nobody believe in us, nobody invest uh, a penny or like one uh, krona. <laughs> yeah. So and uh, but the, for one today, euro maybe. one euro. Yeah. But before it was krona. <laughs> Crown, yeah. Crown, yeah. Okay. So um, for today we produce approximately four thousand graduates. 
uh, people who complete course, half of them uh, decide to stay in IT industry, in ICT, and almost 10%, even more, found job in IT mm -hmm. because of our organization. Excellent. Yeah. So and what does it mean for, for you to build such a social education community? Yeah. First of all, uh, it's a good question, which I was asked many yes. times, why you need it? So, uh, so what is business or why are you doing that? For me, it's a big inspiration. So when you try to build something bigger, bigger than you have at the moment, when you can impact uh, uh, dramatically on people's lives, so you, you can uh, change their life for the better. And uh, for me, it's a big uh, enjoy, it's a main, as I said, a big inspiration. When people come to us, believe, so if we give them a chance. Probably it's the last chance in life to change, uh, to change profession and jump in, uh, jump in the industry. Um, in such way, so it just continues the topic, uh, living in Slovakia uh, in 2017, together with uh, like our small team, uh, my partner Alex and uh, Valeria, so we decided to extend these projects. We are only Ukrainian coming, by the way, I'm happy to see many Ukrainians here, who are residents in the campus. It's becoming international, right? Yeah, international, yes, and Ukrainian IT uh, community becoming bigger and good integrated in Slovakian IT ecosystem. So what we decided to do, we decided to extend the project uh, in uh, your country, mm -hmm. here in Slovakia, and st start from two cities, uh, Kosice and uh, Bratislava. So we also established new organization which uh, uh, at the moment is already open running. It's called Danube.digital, mm -hmm. or Danube Digital. It's also NGO, it's Občanske Druženje. Civil Association, yes, Občanske Združenje. Sorry for my French. <laughs> <laughs> Slovakian. Yeah, 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 yeah I'm, anyway. still, I'm still dummy here. Uh, so oh, your Slovak is pretty good, I, I heard you Come on. speaking. So your Russian morning. is better. Well, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I prefer not to start. Gavrila <laughs> Ruski. <laughs> so together with our team, uh, we decide to uh, use our accumulated knowledge from uh, uh, which from our legacy, our knowledge uh, in education, in marketing and innovation, and we already launched launch great uh, relation with called the Noob Digital. So all projects uh, in education in future it's going to be a startup acceleration program. We decide to put. So, uh, with this, you are track. based in Bratislava, or you are in more more than one cities in, in, uh, in At the moment, we operate in three cities. So re recently, we uh, agree with Zilina University to start in February one more location. Now it's uh, Kosice, Bratislava, Zilina, mm -hmm. and I'm talking uh, together with uh, my my partners, talking to uh, Banska Bystrica, mm -hmm. also Preshov, and Nitra. But it's not so quick as I expect. So education is still part of my life, and we're going to scale and scale in this uh, small but great country. Okay, excellent, great. So are there, are there any you know, differences or some challenges that you encountered uh, when you know, working with people in Slovakia, Ukraine and Moldova? Is there, is there something different? Is there a communication strategy you need <coughs> to change or adapt? Or are there any cultural differences and so on? Can you, can you comment on, on this? Yeah, uh, I think I, I can comment. So, Living here two years, I got some insight, so mm -hmm. got some uh, uh, feeling uh, and some intuition how to behave, what to do, what not to do. So let's put separately Moldova because I never live in Moldova. Okay. Yeah, luckily, or well, unlikely. But uh, Moldova was first country where, where we decided to try uh, uh, to try our educational project. So it's still uh, going on. So only one location in Kishinev. But for Slovakia, because I'm here, because uh, my partner's here, so we decide to go further. And what we see, actually, it's not b it's absolutely not big, uh, not so big gap, almost no gap between our cultures. So we are Slavic, yeah, Ukraine, it's mm -hmm. uh, Slovakia. Neighbors, good neighbors, never uh, got any conflict between each, uh, between us. Mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, good historical legacy. Mm -hmm. um, what I see that uh, generation in Slovakia especially I also divide Slovakia like West and East mm -hmm. so uh, I never never identify that people from East and from West they also think a bit different and they behave a bit different so yeah, people, there are a lot of regional differences people right, from East say ah Bratislava so they are lazy so they are like close to Vienna somewhere on the West mm -hmm. so we are here like on the East so I would say in, uh, in English hard workers yeah we are hard okay. workers so we survivors and um, they're proud of a cautious society value, they're proud of uh, like what they achieve at the moment. Mm -hmm. 
so using all these artifacts, all this uh, insight, so I decide to use uh, rule number one. So be patient, yeah? <laughs> be patient, wait, uh, build relationship, and invest even more than I, we did in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. In Ukraine, a lot of business and big business communication based on the relationship. Establish relationship, do networking, then try to um, to invest there mm -hmm. and develop. Is it similar in Slovakia? According yes, to it's even more. Even more. Even more. So, so the relationships are even more important even more in because Slovakia first of all, than in Ukraine, right? Uh, yes, because first of all, we, we are Chudins, yeah? Chudins. So right, foreigner, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Foreigner. So that's why f I need to make uh, one more step up, so or even more steps to get... Uh, yeah, to get the success, so to get people believe in what we are doing, and even got the first partners, uh, like how I how I got in Pixel Federation in uh, Simon and Lucia, mm -hmm. in the partners because I got introduction from uh, um, from Dusan, mm -hmm. so how I got to Dusan because uh, another person introduced me also, so it's step by step. But before we introduce it and uh, get this trust, so it it, it took some time, so. It, I want to say that uh, in Slovakia, I'm sure that other countries, if you come to Germany, it will be even worse. If you come to more the West or like Austria, Germany, Switzerland, so people look at you like this one, who are you? What are you doing here? So we are happy without you. <laughs> so you are what you invented, new bike. So uh, exactly. it's taking more time. Um, and But now we have some trust. And I believe that uh, the ideas which we are going to bring, uh, as I mentioned also, interesting startup acceleration programs like Y Combinator give you chairs, table, mentorship, a bit of money, core US next six months and uh, bootstrap so until MVP. This is some, so something we're going to so do so in so addition to education. You managed to establish yourself pretty pretty well in Slovakia, right? Over the yeah. last, last three years. Yeah, and I, why, why, why did you choose Slovakia? Why, why Slovakia? You know, why, why would someone from Ukraine, you know, well established in Ukraine and many, many other countries would come to Slovakia? You know, Ukraine why, is not really, really well established. I mean, someone <laughs> well established uh, in Ukraine. Um, okay, so the uh, question is uh, good and uh, I was asked it also many times. Uh, it's, we are not uh, running away. Uh, not running away with uh, a group of people like uh, after like against this problem so mm -hmm. we are not hiding uh, so what we actually decide to do in 2015 we decide to try to live somewhere else not in Ukraine to be at the same time close to our country because we have a lot of friends community and part of businesses in the same time to be part of uh, uh, well-developed international uh, uh, community, European Union country, mm -hmm. for this better legislation, with better IP protection, and be close to our clients, or our customer. Because to, uh, together with Alex, we are in software business. I don't know, together, 30, 30 plus years. So he also came from software business. So and we. So your customers are in Western cus Europe. Right? Always, yeah. Western, Western Europe, uh, North okay. Europe. It's like UK number one. The, the Germany, mm -hmm. Austria. Because Slovakia is a pretty good location, right? For good location, to good to travel. Uh, mentality, mm -hmm. uh, men and uh, mindset and mentality very close. Okay. Language integration, one hour to UK if, uh, flights. Uh, good legislation system. Not offshore, but at the same time, <laughs> almost <laughs> offshore. <right>? Almost, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we are happy. Okay. So we are happy offshore and offshore uh, at the same time. So, so like it's a good choice. Excellent, excellent. So maybe let's now switch to the second topic of our of our of our interview, which is yeah. which is blockchain. Um, so uh, how how did you get into into blockchain? So also interesting story because I'm not considering myself as a. Uh, like a guru or pioneer or early adopter in blockchain. So I always uh, uh, telling the same story. So like when I met today you, mm -hmm. so and you share your story from 2011. 2011. 11, yeah. You know personally Vitalik Buterin. With Bitcoin, yeah. Vitalik yeah, Buterin. Yeah. So you did a lot of mining or close to China. Yeah, yeah. Years, yeah, very, years very ago. interesting years story. Ago. Yeah. Yes, so yes, <laughs> I heard about blockchain uh, first time on. Um, one of events on IDC roadshow, mm -hmm. so you know IDC they went uh, organized a lot of uh, summits on CIO for um, uh, inviting opinion leaders. So in 2014, mm -hmm. just 2014, it's uh, three years ago. I heard mm -hmm. about that's no, a long time in blockchain world, right? Three years is, uh, is yes, is so ages, it's, ages. Right? Yeah, every year we have some something which disrupts our 
like new new business domain and uh, new industry. So that's why it's very agile, very uh, it's a long time, three years. So actually, but I also heard about not about uh, blockchain first, about Satoshi Nakamoto. It's funny. That's, uh, well, that was people, the first use case of blockchain technology, right? It's yeah, blockchain. exactly. So when we went, when you, uh, I was asked, uh, I asked some uh, some Norwegian guy, Norwegian guy, uh, who was one of speaker about their uh, crypto, uh, crypto technology. So everybody smiled when uh, people tried to uh, to ask, "Do you know who is Satoshi?" So when one, what you know, what I uh, what I heard. So among these people, there are uh, several uh, opinions and several. Uh, it's a stories. Mm -hmm. So one people think that it is a group of. It is not one guy. Yeah, it's a group it's of. It's a group of people. Group of people. Exactly. Uh, another is, uh, one like uh, group of people think okay, this is uh, probably personality. Somebody else thinks the group of uh, Islam terrorists who are it's a, like big big plan to crash America and U US mm -hmm. or all this world and make a lot of shit. Some people think it's a Chinese government as, as well. Really? Yeah, that's first, why they're so, so successful in Bitcoin know. mining. Yeah, well, uh, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> you know better. You no, no, no one, no, no one knows actually. I met, I met four, four guys. You know, gave me, you know, hand like like this, shake my hand, and they said that they are Satoshi Nakamoto. So this, this is my personal, personal experience. They're kind of sure, you know, telling me this. I'm Satoshi Nakamoto. But uh, yeah. well, probably you know, you know, there is there is the only way to prove this: uh, move move bitcoins from you know some some addresses at the. At, at the, at, at the beginning of the Bitcoin blockchain, right? So if you have the private key, you can exactly. prove you are you are Satoshi exactly. Nakamoto. This is the only way to prove. But as a way, did you hear about this uh, investigation that uh, people, one agency is from US says that we found found out finally who is Satoshi? The one in my fingerprint. My fingerprint. Uh, yeah. It's a bullshit, simply. Right? Well, I don't think it could work. You know, this thing. You know, there are, there are no fingerprints on the private keys in, in blockchain. <laughs> Okay. Maybe. Nevertheless, so uh, I heard about the blockchain and uh, the so, Satoshi. So, so we have software development experience, right? Yeah, 2015, yes. and it, it came to my life uh, through software development, software engineering. In your company, in, in yeah, Kiev. you have 100 employees. You, you it's up, oh, yeah, up to 100. Distributed uh, in, uh, we distributed uh, in two countries now: okay. Slovakia plus Ukraine. Okay. In Ukraine, we have bigger pool of IT specialists, yes. so it's more. Unfortunately, I'll explain why we have more people there, but we want to grow in Slovakia and hiring more engineers. It's one of the reasons why we yeah. in, try to invest in education. Yeah. And, but and one of your core business is that business software development is blockchain, right? You work with various yeah. companies so we, we from Switzerland and someone developing blockchain projects, exactly, right? In exactly. And, what and this is your for profit business, right? Uh, at the moment, it's becoming more. So we are okay. getting more interesting projects okay. from Switzerland, from uh, UK, and from Israel. Mm -hmm. And crazy, crazy guys with crazy ideas coming to us. I was new, uh, new creating new coin, uh, one more crypto wallet, uh, like, okay, get white labeling model, why you need one more, okay. So uh, developing trading, tra white trading, trading platform, right, right? yeah, trading maybe. platform, maybe. Tra one more trading platform with uh, arbitrage, so uh, we're getting more projects and that's why we start to invest uh, our time and could invest in research and, and financially in this direction, so now. Excellent. Historically, uh, one year ago, I want to say that it was more big data and data science uh, projects. Now it's uh, b becoming bigger business for the blockchain. Blockchain product development. Yeah, for the right blockchain. And if you ask what exactly in blockchain and which technology are uh, more, like not popular, more demandable to, to our company, so uh, smart several use cases. We will, I, will, I will introduce. Yeah. No worries. I'm just uh, smart contracts. Smart contract, okay. it's, uh, I think it's the uh, most hot topic uh, and most applied for uh, a lot of industries. It's indeed a buzzword, right? In, in yeah, it's, world, uh, right? it's fintech and insurance, uh, in healthcare, is uh, in cadastral care. Mm -hmm. Question? Yeah. yeah, I'm just... Okay, okay. Uh, second, it's a trading platform. Mm -hmm. So people uh, people want to earn money on uh, commission on the trading. So and. At the moment, we are developing a few projects exactly. Excellent. In, in, Excellent. In so there is a wide range of use cases. Your company is focusing at exactly. In, uh, in exactly. Blockchain, so right? what we and do, 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 do you also teach blockchain in your non-profit project? Do you also teach blockchain <laughs> development, like maybe Ethereum or something, in your non-profit uh, foundation uh, in, in Slovakia? At the, maybe at the moment, no. But it's a good idea. And if you have uh, some something to discuss, I'm open to use our current uh, uh, platform, educational yeah. platform. So. Probably we can build, build some mentorship program like what we did with uh, Harvard courses mm -hmm. for the blockchain because I think that a lot of people they uh, want to be there they want to jump in yeah. that but they need more 
like exactly. teaching more exactly. yeah, courses, mentorship, right. mentorship right? <laughs> like, ba- like body like you yeah. next to him or some uh, some uh, yeah, good, good developers master can, yoda can, can, master can, yoda exactly, to, exactly. to teach them how to be uh, you know, good general. developers can can teach by, by themselves right they can learn learn the learn the code by themselves but to having a mentor and, and a course it's always, always exactly always. and uh, mm-hmm. one is so one of uh, i think the one of the most hot topic is to invite uh, junior JavaScript people, for example, to upgrade in, uh, in Solidity. Mm-hmm. In Solidity. Are there any Solidity developers over, over here in the, in the crowd? Maybe? No. Okay, so there is a shortage of Solidity developers, at mm-hmm. least, at least yeah, in, but in Slovakia. If you know, but if you know JavaScript, uh, welcome. Yeah, a bit far. Oh, if, if, you do, uh, if you have experience, uh, solid experience in Java, go, go lang. So you also, it's a good opportunity to jump in blockchain world. Excellent. So, so maybe l- let's let's talk a little bit about about ICOs or the new you know uh, and hot crowdfunding crowdfunding model. What, what do you think about ICOs? What do you think the future of ICOs will be this year? Okay, let's first of all uh, take a look at uh, 2017. So it was crazy crazy year, and we saw a lot of uh, I would say uh, rocket flights. So it's uh, to the space a lot of. Uh, uh, ICO this uh, raised a lot of money so and uh, in 2017 uh, this world already met some uh, let's say unicorn in the blockchain so people proud about raising uh, like hundred millions or tens of millions I think that's uh, in few days right in a single digit days maybe in seven days uh, yeah projects yeah, so raised more than 100 million US dollars in uh, so the ICO. you know this case it's uh, the platform for AI they raised uh, in uh, first three minutes, three minutes. So they raised uh, three million US dollars in, in three yes, minutes. Yeah. yeah, there are a lot and, of ICOs that have been sold out in few minutes, exactly, right? Exactly. Raising, in Ethereum, in, uh, in Bitcoin, and uh, other altcoins. Yeah, I, th- I think one one of the biggest one was uh, Filecoin, right? They're raising more than two hundred million last even last more, summer. Even more. More two hundred something, yeah. I think. Uh, does anyone know the number? Two hundred and twenty million US dollar. 250, even 250. So 250 million US dollars in a matter of days or, or weeks. So uh, when we compare this to VC and our private equity, this is a totally different uh, uh, ecosystem. So okay. what I want to say is that uh, 2017 uh, showed us that uh, the big potential of ICO was a uh, huge uh, crowdfunding platform. So when people can, uh, if you believe in this idea, so you you invest. So actually, you try ICO. ICO. But uh, it's a good news. It's the bad news that um, uh, a lot of fails, a lot of fails 2017. So people uh, even didn't know so how many like, ICO uh, got in troubles actually, and uh, like few reason uh, is spent about ninety percent, right? <laughs> at, I, at least, I, I think at least, no, at least, yeah, I think even more. Yeah. So and uh, so ninety percent of ICOs just failed. You know, they didn't raise. Yeah, it's an interesting. Ideas. It's an interesting statistic if you compare generally to startup eco- eco- ecosystem. So just uh, statistics show that from thousand startup, just uh, ten survives uh, during the first year, and among this ten, uh, just for three four, they have chance to become something big, become something bigger. So Unicorns uh, maybe. Probably yeah. Maybe. So also very careful with the definition of unicorn. It's a valuation of one billion or, or revenue of uh, one billion, right? Always, always valuation, asking, yeah. right? valuation. So in 2018, so this uh, this world will see more ICO. It will proliferate. Yeah, right? it will be growing. Mm-hmm. So and uh, people becoming, they, they put like the defini- like definition of blockchain. Mm-hmm. So for example, if you're selling Coca-Cola, yeah, if you say blockchain Coca-Cola, mm-hmm. so your valuation could be. A, like this in the, uh, in the second, so like, you, know, you know this case. Like saying something dot com, right? In uh, th- what, many 20 people, years many ago, people right? compare the dot com bubble. bubble. Yeah, exactly. com. But in um, if you look at dot com bubble, so you remember that uh, all companies start to add uh, dot com to the name of the company. Exactly. Yeah, but .com it, because of right? exactly because of boom of internet in that time, but now we have a bit a bit different situation. People uh, confused. Some, most of people like dummies or around they confuse Bitcoin and blockchain together we have, we look at it separately so blockchain is a great technology it's not about Bitcoin right it's not about cryptocurrency so not about, only it's right? not so only yeah so the nature of Bitcoin lays under 
Excellent. Uh, under the uh, bit, uh, blockchain. So, so the range of blockchain use cases is much wider than just yeah, exactly. cryptocurrencies so or just I, bitcoins or just tokens. Pers right? Personally, uh, personally, Intelica and uh, together with Alex, so we would like to invest uh, uh, invest this year in few, uh, few ICOs. Yeah, but uh, we have interesting. Uh, what are the criteria? In, in, this inferring. Is, what are the criteria? Because there may be someone in the crowd in, in doing, doing the interest. Yeah, I so, want to so. say some interesting. Do you want an investor? <laughs> <laughs> One second. So I, I want to say something uh, important that uh, what we would like to offer uh, to young entrepreneurs, uh, idea generators, it's uh, mostly not financial tickets, which most people are looking for. Okay, give me money. Give me financial tickets, how much you invest. Uh, R&D for equity. Yeah, yeah. Guys, so uh, come to us, uh, share your ideas. So we can, we are ready to sign very strict NDA if you think that you are next unicorn. So, and we help you to, if we believe in you, believe in your ideas so we can help you starting from uh, business analysis phase, uh, design uh, prototype, and then help you to build MVP and ask for some humble share. So uh, we can discuss it. Now it's unofficial because we are not running like incubation acceleration program, like, mm -hmm. like a Y Combinator or Testart. But uh, this year definitely. So uh, we both believe in technology. We both believe in. Excellent. Yeah. So we have a question from the crowd. Um, which use case of blockchain would be the first to gain mass adoption? What do, what do you think? Which use case? Uh, it can be ICO, yeah. you know. Maybe maybe ICO is one of the first one use cases of blockchain that gains uh, yeah. mass mass adoption, right? At least the first use cases of Ethereum that gain it's uh, a number mass one. adoption. The second one, I think, it's uh, smart smart contracts. Mm -hmm. So because it's apl it's applicable for uh, many uh, verticals. Is there any particular vertical that you think that would uh, that would be uh, that would gain the mass adoption very very soon? I think it's uh, it's already happening. So it's some countries and government who believe in it. It's emerging markets, okay. Like in Asia, for example, or fintech and insurance, uh, healthcare is the first industry we should take it, uh, take it for a smart country, smart smart country. So you think emerging markets or yes, the emerging market and the and the industries, the business domains where it's uh, so important to. Uh, to sign direct, yeah, direct relationship in uh, hospitality. Uh, so I think it's ICO is number one. Okay. So how long will the ICO so popular and profitable in your in your opinion? How, how long will this last? Is, is it the dot com bubble? You know, we already discussed, but but how long? You know, because there are there are people you know saying this can take two years, and they are you know pushing the ICO you know this year to do it as soon as possible because then it will be over the crowds will stop to be interested in this so so, so do you think this will this is like a, happening in a, in a cycle right the business cycles that you know there is a phase of it and then it then it changing into something else or you think it will this is the new crowdfunding model this is the new financing model and this will replace venture capital and private equity so so you almost what, what do you, what you do you almost think? answer my question uh, on the question the second part of mm -hmm. your comment so uh, it will be profitable until people believe in it so and believe in uh, investor so we have few, few types of investor in the moment so one of uh, like uh, uh, mammoths, yeah, mm -hmm. mammoths of uh, uh, in this world, they uh, bigger, big uh, VC mm -hmm. uh, who believe that uh, old school investment, it's still uh, still something which uh, uh, maintains this world of investment. So they look like very carefully investment into shares. Right? Yeah. this is yeah. old school investment, right? <laughs> so we are in Oman this I, I one of one of the pioneers of, of, of a VC investment. So so guys, this is old school. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I, I, okay, ICO yeah. is the new IPO. I, I, yeah, I exactly. So and uh, um, so as a crowdfunding platform, so it's an excellent uh, use case, and that's why. Uh, so it could somehow it's maybe. A, it's a a very easy. If people believe believe in the product, so it doesn't matter. You invest uh, one dollar or you uh, invest uh, one bitcoin. Mm -hmm. sure. So it's a, it's the same. So for me. It's more belief, uh, not profitable. Generally, it's about the product. It's about the approach how to invest. So, if there is a business case, then then you will. Yeah, work, exactly, right? exactly. Okay, so we, we are talking about ICOs and investment. So, so a very good question. <laughs> we will we will come into this in a, in a moment. But first of all, how to find a great investor? Maybe we can give some advice to uh, other 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 people who uh, who are looking for investors. So, how to how to find a great investor into an ICO? Let's say. How or how to find a great investor into a blockchain startup, non-ICO blockchain startup? Actually, let's uh, 
let's summarize. Uh, it's not only about ICO or blockchain. Yeah, it's about find really good, cool. good guy who will not cheat you. Uh, in the end, so first of all, the, my personal advice: uh, I'm not considering myself as a professional uh, business and uh, in angel investor, etc. So, but I got some experience talking to uh, yeah. European and US uh, uh, investor who are like uh, operating. Uh, operating uh, under the big funds mm -hmm. so and um, what actually my top three tips or advice is number one talk to relevant investor so talk to uh, investor and uh, try to build relationship with people who understand what they're doing so where they going to invest so there are a lot of again old school guys with a lot of money who build them on uh, I don't know from Gorbachev time, USSR time, just on uh, the old bl money. bloody the money, old, old money. Yeah, yeah, blood, blood money, and they feeling like smell of. Okay, this is innovation. So this is something they heard about new billion unicorns, etc. They wanna use you, and like cheat you at the moment probably in, uh, somehow, but they don't understand what they do. So why they put you money? So you can get it easy, and then you can uh, lost easy, much more easy your business. So, uh, advice number one, talk to relevant people. To relevant Who people. can add some other value than, yeah. than money. So, look for smart money, right? Is it yeah, it's a first. Yeah. Uh, I can also rephrase it. So get less, but get quicker. Uh, get smarter. Okay. Uh, second advice, uh, try to talk to people who want to who wanna join you as a mentor. So, advisor and be, uh, provide some mentorship, mentor to, uh, to your idea. So probably it's uh, they could help you with uh, marketing things or with uh, technology stack. Mm -hmm. I don't know, make some good intros and PR uh, on the market where you're going to go, like uh, it's US or Europe or global. So fi try to find a mentor. It's uh, hard to say. Uh, it's, it's easy to say, but hard to find. So everybody wants idea of investor. Mm -hmm. um, uh, always your pitch should be with you. When somebody... Uh, Elevator pitch, meet, yeah, meet elevator you in the pitch. elevator, right yeah, here elevator is the second pitch. floor, so it takes, what, 15 seconds even less. to get here, even less? Even, so even less, even You less. need to be able to pitch. I like so much this, uh, uh, this movies, it's a few seasons of uh, Silicon Valley. Okay. okay. You okay. never seen I never seen it. Okay, it's I'm like, sorry. It's a more comedy, <laughs> <laughs> come on. Okay. It's a good comedy, uh, uh, but uh, a lot of uh, interesting lessons, lessons people can get from that. So relevant investors, uh, like adding some value, sh value with as a mentor, mm -hmm. and uh, before to ask money, ask why you need it. Mm -hmm. If you really need it, I think it's not uh, directly uh, like uh, part of the question uh, what you check got, but actually try to think uh, what is the level, what is the balance between boot bootstrapping, so where you can put uh, all your ma money from your pockets, uh, sell your car. Yeah. Like ask your buddy to be uh, your uh, team member and when you really need to ask uh, for additional investment because you will be so depends and then you, you start to get to losing your uh, your freedom so look at uh, uh, just finishing the answer uh, look at uh, what happened with uber yeah with uh, facebook uh, with mark zuckerberg they are not uh, they is they was uh, all, bo both founders of the great huge enterprise so huge uh, huge companies and uh, well-known companies but they are not they, they can part of this organization but they can't do anything without this uh, board of directors they always uh, fire you and you what you can do nothing and you can lose we are fired once you are yeah, fired because you are uh, shouting taxi on uh, one taxi driver and say you are asshole something like, something like that mm. So that happens in startups after they grow, yeah, right? Something there like is that. More bureaucracy happening and so on. Of course. So maybe let's 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 go on to the second question from the from the wall over here. So how can AI be used on blockchain or or what do you think about the intersection of AI and, and blockchain? You are you have background in both of those industries and I think this is this is the future of uh, of, of IT today. So so what do you think about the intersection of no, those actually uh, both technology so both uh, not technology actually both both domains uh, are disrupted and yeah. uh, disrupted uh, a lot of industries and uh, if you ask me which uh, 
uh, which technology uh, this year, 2018, mm -hmm. uh, impact our lives. So mm -hmm. I think it's uh, AI and the blockchain. Mm -hmm. So it's a uh, top hottest topic. Uh, I have very good, very good examples when uh, this uh, ICO, which raised in a uh, few minutes, uh, three million. Mm -hmm. So they actually they uh, put uh, AI uh, marketplace, mm -hmm. the platform on the blockchain. So they got a success. So I think okay. so. I because, because AI is centralized from some point of view, right? Blockchain is by definition somehow decentralized, either a public chain or, or private chain. By definition, it's decentralized. AI is, on the other hand, it's centralized, right? Right. There is some you, either you have a cluster, you know, infrastructure or whatever. It's somehow centralized. So, so by AI marketplace, you mean that there are multiple, you know, AI you know, multiple providers multiple that are providing their provide AI it. services, right? And on people the, on can the buy AI it on services the blockchain. By, uh, based on a blockchain, decentralized uh, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So there's one intersection which I. I see. Yes. Like, so the role of the blockchain is just more to register, right, and to and to process the, yeah, the but payments. For, for me, it, at the moment, I'm not uh, like hard to answer uh, on a full. Yeah. Uh, it's a very hard question because yeah, we are, we are putting to together I, something is, which is, is, is the by definition centralized and something which is by definition decentralized. What is, what is, what is your so point? how can it be complementary? What is your point? On well, uh, I, I've been thinking a lot about the marketplaces. On this is this is one thing that uh, that, that, that that makes makes sense. Totally, but uh, above this, I, I haven't seen much more, much more use cases. But uh, you know, there are there are, there are oracles, for example, right? That can that can predict something, which is some some part of AI and so on. But a lot, lot of lot of a lot of technical details, which I don't don't want to uh, go into today. Uh, but the marketplace is one of the one of one of, one of the good good ideas. Yes, like uh, example, which I so the guys who build the system, yeah, system marketplace on the blockchain. Which one? Raise money, I saw. Oh, that one for it. Yeah, it was three AI marketplace. Right? Yes, so marketplace. A, one I think is one of the biggest example which uh, I know that they are successful. Okay. The building AI platform on a marketplace on the blockchain. Okay. So maybe we can go into the third question. Do you think there's a use case for uh, blockchain technology in education as well? You know, maybe as a marketplace. I'm just, I'm just brainstorming. Hmm. Uh, Probably, uh, probably much sm uh, smart contracts to for edu like okay. First, first of all, we need to understand uh, if if education uh, because it's, it's probably probably for a smart contracts. Any aspect of education, right? Maybe, maybe there is someone who can sell maybe video lessons, right, over over blockchain some, or some, courses some like decentralized courses, for mm -hmm. example. Courses right. could be could be like uh, mock mock uh, webinars on yeah. online courses. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Probably Coursera or uh, Demitis there already do something uh, in this in that area. Mm -hmm. um, I actually I don't see big value uh, or disruption of education with the blockchain at the moment. Only like delivering educational content. So delivery, is, right? Because anyway, the face-to-face so -face it's, it's my, it's my meetings, right? Okay. One, I agree, one intersection. I pretty much agree with, 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 with this one. I'm not an education <laughs> professional. I don't have I'm, much I'm, experience, I'm, but I'm but face-to-face -face is always face-to-face, -face, right? As we are sitting over here face-to-face. -face. Okay. There is a healthcare question. Who is that question from the people who... Which one, which one, which one, which one, which one you like? Uh, Maybe healthcare. Cryptocurrency is not actually my uh, strong topic. I'm not trading, not speculating. So or how do I'm you spot a scam? I see. Or what do you think? Maybe this is this is hot now. How, how would you spot a uh, you know a scam? I see. We go on the website of an ICO project, you know, promising a great future of uh, you know blockchain and and everything. And how can you find out this is a scam? Or, or what what factors uh, would would influence it's you really in making it's a decision? It's a really hard question because it's uh, you also have. Uh, you should have some intuition, and you should understand. Actually, it's a big mistake when you uh, when you uh, invest in when you don't understand this uh, domain. If you don't believe in it, you believe, but you don't understand what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's uh, I, I don't know some mechanism or some algorithm or automation or so automation so some scam. How to identify the scam? Yeah. So, so for instance, for me, They're always promising. If, for me, if something is a, is a scam, it would be anonymous, right? That people don't put their faces there. Uh, if it's anonymous, I, I would say it's, it's a scam. Yeah. If it's not, if this is not disclosed, who is behind it? Uh, I, I would say it's a scam, most probably. This is this is my. my uh, but I think it's. Uh, I will never even uh, go like more than two minutes on the looking at. If they are not uh, appearing, uh, who is there? Is no team, then what's the topic to? But there are many ICOs like like this. Yeah. Don't have. Of course. So about uh, if you allow me to. 
uh, answer you can question. pick one I think we have still a few minutes to go so feel free to pick maybe yes, the first about one AI and uh, sure, sure. replacing traditional developers so do you believe AI will replace traditional developers so there would be uh, an AI uh, computer coding instead of uh, coders okay uh, I also have uh, good and bad news here okay um, everybody know case of India. It's a great country with uh, I don't know how many developers they have, but this country they uh, actually show this world what is outsourcing, and they create a, even ministry ministry of outsourcing and support on the government level. But uh, quality of engineering, the quality of codes and code of delivery is becoming uh, year by year lower. So a lot of com countries and enterprise they run away from India. So uh, from one from one side, India still have mass, like pl plenty of, uh, uh, let's say low level, low level quality engineers, mostly in QA, mm -hmm. in QA and uh, some, some junior um, junior position. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, at the moment, so I, would, I, I know several platforms and uh, several uh, solutions which already cover uh, a lot for QA, automa mm -hmm. automation, so automated uh, and eliminated uh, uh, workforce, people workforce from that. So I think that India and uh, low level engineering, when you can just uh, use an AI algorithm, just put one, one block to one block mm -hmm. and you, you're getting, you're getting your uh, application, mm -hmm. your, you're getting your solution, can dramatically kill outsourcing market for, for such country like India. But for senior engineers, for architects, and I can compare mostly to Ukraine, to Ukraine and India. So we we have interesting feedbacks. I think that's on the, on the price level or not on the price on the, on the AI. So I, yeah. so if there is one article which uh, I read recently in uh, some Ukrainian media. Okay, so Ukraine going to be die with all this ICT. I mean ICT uh, market because AI coming and Ukrainian developers they afraid to lose job. It's a bullshit. Because in Ukraine, luckily, the percentage of uh, uh, this low, uh, low engineering task and uh, s simplicity of uh, this code testing, all this, which mm -hmm. India tried to sell, uh, like some half, half manual, half automated task. So in Ukraine, the percentage like, I don't know, 5 to say 95. Mm -hmm. So we have more uh, people who create software, they uh, more things than they do some routine work. Mm -hmm. That's why the AI kill first of all, uh, jobs. Yeah. And uh, people who like monkey job, I say. So <laughs> AI kills monkey at the typewriter, right? Jobs, uh, right? So, so it's just, exa it's just okay. an example. Okay. So and uh, next uh, three four years to like next till 2020, I think that AI uh, AI approach and AI automate a lot of uh, developers work, but not for cre creative and architecture things. Okay. So, so this is my my position. Excellent. Excellent. So Thank countries you. like. Again, Ukraine, uh, like Poland, Slovakia, if yeah. we create more great workforce here, so it's nothing to nothing scary here. Great, great. Excellent. So I think we have time for one more question from the crowd. Is there anyone who would like to ask something? Just raise your hand. I, if, if nobody has a question, I would ask. If I nobody have, has a question, <laughs> we have questions. Feel free. <laughs> yeah, interesting, interesting to hear your, your uh, experience with uh, ICO. Actually, uh, what uh, bad and good experience? Who already jump in that? Who fail? Who got some success? Uh, can you raise? Is there okay. anyone who has done an ICO over over here in the past? Okay, Plan planning. Someone <laughs> who is planning an ICO in the future? Is there anyone? There is one. Hand. Raise your hand. Can you raise your hand? Ah, okay. Who is this hero? <laughs> okay. okay, 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 okay. Okay. And okay, not not yet. So maybe, who is, who is maybe looking who is looking for investment for your product at the moment or your crazy idea? ICO or non ICO? No, no, any, any, any. Also VC. Is Old there, school. Is there anyone who is looking for investor? Okay, we have. Okay, I know this guy is coast. <laughs> what kind of product is it? M and Sorry. Application. Application. Parent Mobile application. Mobile. Parent, Mobile application. parent control. Parent control. Ah, oh, you know. Yes. Okay, you already know. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so if there are not any more questions, no, I have I have last one to ask. Please, <laughs> uh, today I'm today I'm asking. Can, uh, 
answer the question yeah. here, right? He went through ICO, so maybe that might be interesting input from Matei. Uh, we should okay, finish, but I'm, I'm, I'm just the host here, moderator, so no, 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 it, should, it should, shouldn't be myself answering the questions, but okay. Uh, which card? Okay, this is crypto. We can skip the first one. Uh, how to convince bank? We talk about okay, how to convince banks to partnership with the blockchain fintech platform? Uh, it's hard. Uh, and the reason is banks consider uh, blockchain fintech platforms and blockchain, blockchain fintech startups their competitors. Whatever you do, banks will consider this. So the answer is basically go to countries where um, a lot of banks cash. do not know much about this yet. So this Imagine is... This is yeah, maybe. Like Asia. Maybe, maybe Asian, Asian, Asian U Uganda. Yeah, yeah, Uganda. <laughs> but then there is a sec you know, sec security issue with the bank. So then you need to trust the bank that there would be, there would be enough cash. But, but it, it's, you know, the, the whole ecosystem is going towards, towards regulation. So I believe, you know, after the CRS and FATCA coming, coming out, the common reporting standard and everything. So, so this year is a little bit, little bit messy in this, uh, anything concerning, concerning fintech and, and blockchain when, when, when talking about banks, but I think next year in 2019 it would be much better and, and regulated. So, uh, so I do not have a particular bank to tell you which, which <laughs> open a, a bank account. So, uh, do you think that the banks and institutions will build blockchain solutions in the near future? Will this fight against the principles of blockchain? Uh, well, they are already doing it. Banks were the first ones to build uh, blockchain solutions and cryptocurrency solutions. They were the first one but to, to start with like this. Like for doing some PR and mainly for exactly mainly for PR purposes, right? Since 2013, that I know about, there, there were banks, you know, forming consortium, you know, the R3C and uh, I don't know digital assets holdings, you know, and, and many there were tens of millions, hundreds of millions, maybe maybe invested till till now, and and there is not not much output from from this now because you know if if you take banks, banks sit of, on on so many assets, right, and and they will be kind of in my opinion, the the last ones to to uh, to put uh, some uh, blockchain platform into uh, you know as their production system, right? Instead of ledger technology, for example, right? If you look in banks, most of them they use old ledgers, old mainframes from 1980s for their operations, and, and you know the question is why why they use IBM mainframes from 1980s. And basically, the answer is it's stable and it works, right? They feel no pressure to change something. So, so, so I, I think the solution is, you know, to build maybe a parallel system in the in the same time and and maybe let, let them let them react. For the healthcare system, I think that uh, it's also a good question. It's a very good use case for establish secure secure uh, connection between patient and uh, and the doctor. So, signing the smart contracts and. Uh, and keeping secure database and uh, records and uh, about it's sensitive data, yes, right? The patient yeah. records and they've been the wanna cry virus. Da data or? management it's a very good uh, um, area to apply the blockchain at the moment. Okay, I think this is for five you. million, five million plus the shortage of five nation. Million. No. no, no. So this is no. You can. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer is no. Uh, is 2018 a good year to start a blockchain-based project startup? I think we went over this, and the reason is yes. Why, why not? Why, why not? Right. So please fail, fail, fail. Pro, pro, pro. My, please my pro do start your blockchain. Yeah, if you uh, never, if you, if you never fail, so it's probably time to fail and then do some good success. Okay. And now there is something about Ukraine. So we are already in Europe. Why we need to integrate? Uh, <laughs> what do you mean by Europe? Do you mean European Union? I mean, the sink, sinking mentality and people... I think, I think they are referring to European Union. I think this is so what they are referring to. We, are, we don't need to integrate. We are already there. Already? Okay. Yeah. So, so it's, it's not about integrated. politician uh, games. It's about uh, feeling. Okay. So this is my personal opinion. Okay. Okay. Super. So we went through all of questions. Cool. So thank you very much, uh, you. Vladimir, for joining us over here. And uh, thanks to Dusan and thanks to all of you for this perfect conversation, the questions and so on. Thank you.